Hi everyone, it's Gail. I'm here with a little bit of a different kind of video today. Um, I'm going to do a little question and answer. Uh, lots of questions always on my videos, which is awesome. And I, I hope you'll always ask. I'm happy to answer if, if I can. <laughs> So, um, so, but there was several that I thought I just kind of put into one video and, and see if I could, could answer some of the more general questions, um, in this video. So the first question I want to address is where do you get your inspiration? And, um, I would say there's a variety of places that I get in, uh, inspiration. Uh, one, I get inspiration from the gorgeous digital work that people do and that I, um, that I either am given or purchase and they always spark something in me. Um, the other place that I'll get inspiration is I love the Somerset Studio magazine. Um, I used to subscribe, don't anymore really, but I, I do love it. And there's often, even if it's um, like a canvas or something, there's often inspiration in there that will translate to tags or journaling cards or whatever. So love that magazine, um, those kind of art magazines, of course. Uh, YouTube videos is another thing. Um, I would, I would list all the people that inspire me, but I'd be worried that I would leave someone out and I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings because practically every video I watch on YouTube inspires me in some way or, or makes me think, oh, I, I want to try that or, um, or sparks an idea to, to, to do something even different, but there's some little thing in that video that sparks me. So there's that. The other thing is, um, is kind of a funny one, but it's really just like digging through my own supplies, like my own scrapbooking paper. Um, sometimes, you know, <laughs> you know how we are. Sometimes we have supplies that we haven't seen in a while. And sometimes it's like, oh my gosh, I want to make something out of that. So, so there's that too. Um, so things in, 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 uh, in my room. Um, I don't know. I think those are the general categories. And, uh, another question that goes along with that kind of is, um, what do you do when you just don't feel motivated to create something? And what I do is start with something small, like do some scrappy embellishments. Let me grab those. I'm going to hop up and down as, as I'm doing this and think of things. And so I hope that doesn't drive you crazy, but, but, um, just grabbing out some scraps and doing some scrappy embellishments, which is, you know, not a lot of thought goes into that, but, but then they're, they're there in my little bag for me to use as I'm making journals or whatever. So starting with something small like that, maybe making some tags, something like that. Um, I often need sort of a, sort of a space. If I've really like, like right now, I'm in the midst of six, uh, cinch binder journals and um, I just, I decided to do this video because I just needed a little break from working on the ephemera. I don't ever want my work to look, well, she just threw this together <laughs> or something like that. I always want to love what I'm doing when I'm doing it. So sometimes you, sometimes you just need a little break and need to do something totally different than what, what it is you're doing right, right at the moment. So that that sort of speaks to inspiration and motivation um i hope i hope that's helpful to you uh so there was that one then another one i'm gonna set these aside they were just sort of the pretty backdrop as i was talking and we are going to get back to that pile but i had um i had the question how to organize your scraps well there is 
a really a million dollar question that's for sure so i have this little bin this is just a little basket and it has the small pieces just the itty bitties there is that so it is within arm's reach so i can always just turn and grab it so that i can do a little collage piece or something I'm going to show you all the the bags that I have, which is they they're definitely right now I feel out of control, so I need to do something with them. What I have is a big fruit box on one of my little stands here and it's right at my right hand basically on the other side of my sewing machine. It's a fruit box and I have all of my bags of scraps standing up in the fruit box. Right now, they're sort of falling over in the fruit box, to be completely honest. But, so this one is cardstock scraps, okay? Then the next one is kind of coffee dyed strips of paper. Um, these are the ones that I will grab and do like, um, fold it in half and make a hinge. Uh, these, these here are thick enough that I'll probably, probably make a, um, like a pad of paper out of them for journals. So I know I definitely need to work on some of those and get that, get that pulled down. So that's the next one. Then after that, oh my goodness, they really, they just, it's just, I, I'm really seeing what a big mess my, my stuff is. So I don't know if this is going to be helpful to show you or not. These are some of the papers that I use with these. So I basically have two, two big sacks of, these are collages, collage pieces that I can use in digitals. Now I only have one collage digital, but I really want to work on another one. So that's what these pieces are. Okay, and then next up, next up comes, you can see I'm having trouble getting up, just collage papers. You know, I just, I, I really, really need to organize these but these are these are pages for collage maps and books and little bits of digitals so that's what that is okay then i have <laughs> this tiny little bag of jelly print scraps so it's nice that there's one tiny bag isn't it isn't it okay then this bag is general scraps not necessarily for um not necessarily for, uh, um, not necessarily, what do I want to say? They're not my typical collage papers. It's just scraps of everything, but I think I need to reorganize those a bit. Okay, I'm going to put that one back because we're getting to the point where we can't really, can't really fit anymore. Okay, um, and then I have tissue paper scraps. So I do have all my bags labeled. But like this one, I've just been cramming them in the top and it's just, it's not even, not, they're not even in there. <laughs> so we're going to say the scrap organization, we're going to use that term loosely here. Um, this is my bag of whole sheet paper scraps. So it's like, it's like a whole sheet, but they, they don't go to any sort of, um, any paper pack or anything, but they are whole sheets. Okay. Okay. And then what do we have? Oh, this is kind of from my mixed media days, as is the jelly print, but they certainly would be usable. Anyway, these are uh, work mat collage papers. So these are from my work mat when I was doing, um, mixed media and I get things all painty and stuff. That's what this is. So that, that is the last one in that side of the fruit box. 
Okay, let's get some of these put back so we have room to show you the other side. Really, this girl has more in a fruit box than uh, anybody should be able to fit, you know? It's kind of crazy. Oh, goodness. Okay, so good. We've got some of those back in there. I still need to put those two back in there. How I had them fit in there, I don't even know. Okay, so the other side. The other side, this is tiny scraps. Not to be confused with the basket that we had, but these are more scrapbook papers. And these are good bases for doing um, scrappy embellishments or clusters which if you want to see videos um, on my channel about that, just just uh, search Gail Augustinelli clusters or Gail August Augustinelli um, scrappy embellishments. So these are ones that I thought would be good bases. These are tiny rectangles, which are really kind of one in the same. And then um, here's some fabric, so that's in a separate bag. But then everything else is just in in here. And it's, I used to have them in a sandwich bag box. Well, they outgrew that, so they got their own, their own baggie. <laughs> okay, so that's the first thing. Then I have this one, which is... I have it as faves. This is my favorite papers. Um, there's Tim Holtz in here. There's Stamperia in here. So if I know, if I want to grab a scrap that I know I'm going to love, this is the one that I grab. Okay. And then the next one in there is another giant one that I need to do some stuff with. Rectangle scraps. So I have like coffee dyed ones, non coffee dyed ones, lots of rectangle scraps in that. And then behind there, behind there is circle waste. <laughs> because heaven forbid I throw anything away. But as you can see, some of these would be fun on um, in collage if I'd remember to grab them. You know, <laughs> so that's the circle ways. Oh my goodness, Gail. Okay, and then behind that is strips, border strips. Um, those are just little strips cut off of everything. And um, a long time ago, I did a uh, a tutorial kind of on woven paper and I need to do some woven paper again and use some of these up so that needs to happen and then and then the at the end of the box are napkin scraps two bags of napkin scraps and this one is kind of my little travel baggie that's got napkin scraps if I'm like going on my retreat or something so I don't have to take these two big things so that is, that is how the scraps are, are um, organized. Once again, losing, using that loosely. Um, so you can see I have some work to do. I really do. I'd say it's probably been a year since I... Um, since I did any work on that box and I just need to take some time, make some things out of all of this stuff and, and then maybe life will be slightly more in control. <laughs> so I don't know if that helps you, but if, if anything, it tells you that my scraps are as out of control as yours are, or even more so. So there you go. So that is the organizing scraps situation. Um, there's also scraps of lace and trims and things. I have one, two, three 
buckets on my shelf like this, which means I need to make some snippet, snippet rolls, snippet trims. And over on my desk here on the side, I just have all of this lusciousness just to grab from. But yeah, it's, um, that also is out of control. So I, what I feel like is I need to stop making journals for a little bit and just make a bunch of ephemera and snippet trims and things to get my scraps under control. So we'll see if I do that. <laughs> Okay, the art glitter cap. So, um, lots of you have, have found the, found the joys of art glitter glue, and I love my art glitter glue. Now, mine's a little gummy right now, but the, the cap here, um, comes separately along with the pin. Um, unless you buy, like, if you buy the pack that is on, my website under Gail's Favorite Things. For that pack, you get a big refill jar. You get this size. You get um, the metal tip and a stainless steel pin to go in. Um, what you do is you take the black cap off and you take this metal, um, this metal tip and you screw it on. It's got the threads on the inside of this metal to just screw on and you need to get it down there and get it tight because otherwise the glue will come out here. So um, I've had questions on that. The other question related to that are these dangle, these fun danglies. Now I got mine in Happy Mail, but I know Tracy Fox has a video on making your own. If I can remember, I'll um, link that video below so that so that you can see that. So hope that answers a few questions on art glitter glue. I'm just gonna make a note on my little list here to uh, put Tracy's video on there if I can. Okay, another thing that I wanted to talk about was on my, webs my website. Now I am filming this ahead. This should this uh, video should run July 5th. I have a lot of vacation time in July. So when I have some days at home, I'm just going to video, video, video so I can try and get videos every day um, and not miss too much on my vacation. So, um, so today is actually in real life, it is June 30th, but this will, this um, will air on July 5th. At the moment, I'm having some issues with my website. But, um, so going to gailagustinelli.com is not working right now. We can't exactly figure out why. But going to the link, uh, Gail Augustinelli, Gail's Favorite Things, gets you into the website. So, um, until that's fixed, I'm going to be putting that in my description box of my videos. So that's one thing on the website. But the second thing on the website is if you go to Gail's Favorite Things um, to order something through my site from Amazon, um, as you know, because now I'm an Amazon affiliate, um, I get a little something when you order through my links, which I so appreciate. Thank you to everyone who's done that. Um, but I wanted to tell you, some gals had trouble. They'd get in there and then the um, the the little... Uh, button for shop now on an item was not there and that's because they had ad block on in their settings so all you have to do if that happens to you is go to your settings turn off ad block and then go back order whatever it is you want to order and then of course you can go back to your settings and turn ad block back on if you want to so I wanted to, that was a question that a couple of people had. So I wanted to address that. Okay. And then I wanted to talk about some digitals because I've just, I, I got my new printer. Love it. Oh my gosh. Again, I have an Epson uh, 2550 EcoTank printer. What I love about that printer is that you can do 6,500 color copies before you need to refill the ink. 
So it's not cartridges, it's little bottles of ink because they go into an ink tank. And um, it's fabulous. I mean, I, I'm not kidding when I say it changed my life because I can print as much as I want now. And the the ink bottles are reasonably priced. And so it's just, it's just awesome because, you know, that... That is, I, I love digital prints. I love supporting other Etsy shops that have digital prints. And so, so yeah, it's, it's awesome. Anyway, um, I wanted to show you some of my latest things. So first of all, all cut up already. I have Rachel at Roxy Creations. I have her wonderful new antique label. It's, it's the one that has You'll recognize it by the pink and orange kind of labels. So I wanted to show you that before I put them in my little ephemera book because um, they're wonderful. And I love Rachel. She is uh, a wonderful, wonderful crafter. Definitely one of my inspirations. And um, she's just a sweetheart as well. She's she's generous and giving and like like. 99.9% .9 of our little junk journaling community is. So anyway, um, all these digital people, I will put them also in the description box below so that you can go check them out if you want to. Okay, so Rachel's labels, that was exciting. Then Mrs. Coggs came out with book plates. They are gorgeous. Let me stand up here so you can see them a little bit better. But they are so cool. I just love these. And I am going to put them... Look at that one. Oh, so beautiful. I'm going to put them in my um, in my cinch journals that I am making. And one is going to be given in a giveaway here soon. So, yeah. So, anyway, I wanted to just, just kind of tell you about... Mrs. Cog's book plates, and there'll be a link below once again. Okay, so that's those two things. Then I wanted to show you some papers that um, I'm, I am trying to think. My friend Austin Arnold showed me uh, one of these websites. I can't remember which one it was now. Might have been this one. I don't know. Anyway, doesn't matter because I've I found a couple new ones that I wanted to share with you guys. So this is Allure Book Crafts is the name of the Etsy shop. And these are called Society Papers. I'm actually going to zoom in so I don't have to lift them up every time. Let's see if I can get right about there. Okay. Okay. So I want to flip through these and let you see. She's got various kits of what she calls Society Papers, but they're just going to be fabulous for collage, I think. I think they're going to be so much fun to use for collage. Look at that. Is I love this brown here. Oh, yeah. This little flower cluster is really fun. So there's one that's more yellows. Little pops of red in this one. And these are all printed on my 32 pound matte photo paper from Red River Paper Company. I do not receive anything for mentioning Red River um, Paper Company. Um, I've been told I should, I should let them know how many people I refer to them, but, <laughs> but anyway, no biggie. Um, I love the paper. It's just very good paper and the prints come out just beautiful. So that's my Allure Book Crafts Society paper. So that's that one. Oh, this one, you guys, cracks me up. Um, first of all, these next, um, these next ones are from Crafty Cat from Amy. And this is the Diorio one. And um, I had to show you, I had to keep this one and show you guys. So this is what a, a, a digital looks like when your printer's dying because <laughs> I killed my printer. I think I've told you guys that. So I got a brand new one. Um, but yeah, it just, it left all those. So 
do I have that this paper? Oh yeah. So this is, <laughs> this is what it's supposed to look like. This is what it looks like when your printer's dying. <laughs> so anyway, but I'll still use this. I'll still use this in collage. It's just a different look, right? Okay. So let's, let's flip through these. I'll make sure I'm in camera. Okay. So this is Diorio, capital D apostrophe O-R-O. -O. And I think it's going to be, once again, really fun for collage, as many of Crafty Cat, many of hers are. I love this. So just really pretty. I think this would be really fun with my uh, kit, The Orchardist, because it's got a lot of references to trees and stuff. So that's what I may do with this one. And then she's got tags and journaling cards and pockets and stuff. So I printed those on ivory cardstock, but aren't those cool? So that little batch is from Amy at Crafty Cat, Diorio Collection. Okay. And then this one, let's see, are all of these from her? Okay, now I've confused myself. No, that is my, that is, oh no, that is my next project. Okay, Uniquely Altered Art. It was either this one or the Allure one, one of those, Allure Book Crafts, or Uniquely Altered Art. I think it might have been this one that Austin told me about. So I've just printed these on um, copy paper, so they're not as bright as the ones on fo matte photo paper. But I love them. I love the vintage things popped in here and there. Oops. This one. Well, no, I'm not sure which way it goes. Doesn't matter. It's for collage. So uniquely altered art. I um, printed off a few of her things to use in collage because, as you can see, I don't have enough scraps for collage. <laughs> Oh my word. So then, um, then I printed out my next design team project for Artie Mays, which is her boho kit. Look at the lovely, lovely papers in this kit. Isn't that fun? Yeah. So those, those are all Artie Mays. And I think we're going to have some fun with that, with that journal for sure. So, yeah. So I got, but I'm finishing my cinch ones first. That's what I'm going to do. And then here is, I haven't printed everything from the kit, but just some of the things I thought I would use for sure. Love these. these she says for use on the cover. Um, I have some gorgeous, uh, fabric that I think I'm going to make the cat cover out of. So whether I put anything on it, I'm not sure. And then these are a couple of the envelopes. So I have that all printed out and ready to go as well. So I wanted to tell you about all those digitals. And um, once again, I'll put links below for all these wonderful people and their gorgeous gorgeousness. Let's see what else. Um, that it that about takes care of my list. The only other thing, let's talk about this. I don't necessarily have to demonstrate, but I had a question about tags, about tags. And she said, you know, how do you make tags? Well, there's a lot of ways. Let me grab for you just one moment. Um, just going to grab out a couple of things. Um, I have this little basket that has all sorts of tag bases. So these are, um, these are embossed paper tags, book page tags that are just, um, a couple of book pages glued together. 
then we'll collage on the front and and make something of those there are tags that are just out of um, scrapbook paper these book tags I sewed around and gessoed um, I should probably back out oh my gosh I'm sorry if I was like totally in your face with that um, okay uh, Let's see, these are um, book pages that I've collaged over, gessoed on the back. They really just need to be sewn around in a topper and they're done. So there's those. Of course, you can get these manila tags online or, um, or in uh, office supply stores. And so they make a great base. And I've done a few different things with them. These, this one is sprayed. I think these all are sprayed. Um, I've used brushos on these to make tag bases. Now I will use that in the boho journal for sure. I'll put an image on it, maybe stamp a little in the background, that sort of thing. So, um, so there's about as many ways as you can think of to do tags. Okay, here's one that has a napkin decoupage on the on the back of it. Just needs some stuff on um, put on it for focal points and stuff. This is one of my drop papers that I just um, doodled around. You know, there's just it's it's almost a hard question to answer because. You can make almost anything into a tag. <laughs> Just got to cut it down. Um, and then I wanted to bring over, I still have a little pile of things from Austin. So Austin has done um, lots of sewing on his stuff. But, um, but like he's got a six by six piece of paper here that he's sewn a little piece on. You know, we can cut the corners of that and they, there's a tag, right? So, um, another thing, let's see, in my, in my to decorate basket, these tags I cut out of, um, a really heavy, uh, calendar. And so it's, it's good heavy paper, but, um... They just need to be decorated a little bit, and, and those will turn into tags. So you can see there. So um, so I hope that helps a little. I mean, like these tags, these tag bases that I just haven't put together yet. These um, are file folder, and they're just cut. I would make a pocket here and punch a hole and put a grommet through and put this a grommet here. These were a Tracy Fox design and then you decorate both. So there's some basis for tags. There, like I say, just about anything can be made into a tag. Um, what else do I have? This was from a Happy Mail, but this is just a piece of coffee dyed paper cut in the shape of a tag made with a little pocket. I thought that was such an awesome idea. I popped it in here so I'd remember that. Um, and then of course you can, um, you can buy online these inventory tags. Um, a Tattered Dream on Etsy uh, is, is where I get my tags like this pre-made. Um, and so there's that too. There's that too. You can make tags ugh, out of a circle punch, a big circle punch, put a little hole in a grommet, and you've got a little tag there. So possibilities with tags are endless. So I, I didn't know quite how to, um, how to address that other than to say, you know, I would search on, on YouTube I would search junk journal and tags and see what comes up for videos on making tags. I mean, I feel like everything I just went through 
has given me ideas for about, you know, like 15 videos. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's, um, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot that can be done and it's all of it so fun. So I hope that that's answered some of your questions. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Um, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more question and answers. And um, what I'm planning on doing is just jotting down some questions that, that happen in the comments and every now and again doing a whole video where I just answer questions. <laughs> now, granted, these digitals were not really a question, but again, they totally inspire me. Like I'm itching to make some journaling cards with these collage ones. So, and Artie Mays, I can't wait to do my boho journal. So I don't know. I think, I think inspiration's all around us. You know, sometimes, sometimes when I'm feeling blocked, I just need to go for a walk or I need to sit on my sit on my deck and just listen to the birds sing for a while. Nature is a huge inspirer. It it's huge in kind of cleansing your spirit and getting ready getting you ready to create. So so anyway, hope that was helpful and I appreciate your watching and listening to me babble on and we will just see you in the next video. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.